when you heard that Derek Jeter came up one, one vote short of joining Mariano Rivera as being the only two unanimous Hall of Fame selections, what what went through your mind? Oh, I mean, I was a little surprised. I think, obviously, that uh, Mariano uh, kind of broke that mold that they were going to get away from it. But, you know, in hindsight, does it really matter? Probably not. It was no shock. Jared Cheater was uh, going to be a Hall of Famer. But, you know, when you start splitting hairs and have that many votes and have one person, uh, you would love to hear the reasoning behind it, obviously. Talking to Paul O'Neill with us, and I, I think we all agree hearing the explanation would be interesting for this, but as you mentioned, still a Hall of Famer, like still got over well over that threshold, and I, I'm curious as a teammate, we at the outside world hear so much about the folklore around Derek Jeter and the postseason exploits and the dating life and all these things. For you as a teammate, who was Derek Jeter and why was he a Hall of Famer in your eyes? Well, I mean, he evolved, obviously. He was a young kid that was, you know, given the job in 96 with a little question mark in everybody's mind. I mean, is is, is he ready? And uh, it didn't take long, um, you know, to see and to figure out, you know, he was going to have a, a phenomenal career ahead of him. Was he going to be, you know, 20 years in the major leagues and one of the better players and, uh, you know, a Hall of Famer? Nobody knew that, but uh, you knew that, he was not overwhelmed at all by uh, popularity and the situations, big situations, and always, always seemed to perform. Uh, you, you wanted him as a teammate in that big position because uh, he was good at it. It seemed like he was good at everything. Uh, there's no question about it. And listen, you know, they called him the captain. He was the captain for a reason. Uh, outside of the numbers, we can see that. I mean, my God, his postseason career was essentially a regular season in which he had 200-plus hits, had a 300 batting average. As a teammate, as someone who was the captain, as someone who was his responsibility to get people going, what can you tell us about that guy that we don't know? Uh, I mean, he was not the kind of guy that was going to call meetings and rah-rah and, you know, we got to do this. But, you know, just his – his presence and the way he played, uh, the way he showed up, and you know, just you could always, as a player, kind of see uh, guys that were nervous. You know, they they would act like they weren't, and they would laugh, and uh, you know, like this isn't that big a deal. But you actually believed it uh, when you looked at Jeter because it, that's it, that's who his personality was. He had a ton of confidence in himself and uh and a big desire to win i mean he uh, was there for one reason and you know i think that's why the new york people took to him so quickly uh, yeah there's a one of the things that I, I i love about that one of the stories you hear so much about him is when you guys were playing the world series against the diamondbacks and you were down late and he said that infamous line hey don't worry the ghost in this place will wake up eventually and then of course we had those home runs to send that game into extra innings and you went on to win it yeah, that's right after he had told the president not to bounce it. They'll yeah, do it. So, that's I mean, exactly who's, right. got the, who's got the guts to do these things and still get away with it with, you know, a smile on his face? Well, uh, he had a knack for that and uh, his ability to, to deal with the media and the, the you know, the popularity uh, of New York. And, and during those years, uh, you know, that, that takes a lot of focus. And uh, he definitely had that. Talking to Paul O'Neill with us, World Series champion on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. The Hall of Fame, Larry Walker, the other name involved in that. As far as him getting over in his last and 10th year on the ballot, getting over that threshold by six votes, did you think in all of this the criticism of where he played for so much of his career was a little bit unfounded? Well, I, I think a lot of times, you know, guys are held responsible. I mean, you are where you are. I mean, in this day and age, you can move around a lot. Um, you know, back then, a lot of times, you know, you stayed with an organization and he, he, you know, he was with organizations that he was comfortable playing and had a chance to win, but, you know, didn't win World Series. But uh, it's, it's not the player's fault always. I mean, I know a lot of guys that uh, were unbelievable players. Um, Don Mangley comes to my mind, got to play – you know, with the New York Yankees, but in, had one opportunity in the playoffs. Is that his fault? No, it just was the timing was wrong. So there's great players that don't always end up on great teams. Paul O'Neill with us this morning talking about the induction into the Hall of Fame of his uh, former teammate Derek Jeter and also Larry Walker, very well deserved. But, Paul, that's one of the stories we've had uh, around Major League Baseball over the last couple of weeks. And uh, as we like to say here, uh, baseball Twitter went drunk 
blackout drunk last week with all the conspiracy theories about what did and didn't go on with the Houston Astros. We know that they stole signs. We know that they cheated. We know Major League Baseball has suspended them for that. We also know Major League Baseball is looking into the Boston Red Sox, and we expect ramifications to come to that team as well. As a guy who played in this league for a long time and you know, was around a lot of things, including a lot of guys uh, that use steroids in your era, what do you make of what we've seen and what should be the fallout from what's gone on in Houston? Well, I think they're doing a good job because they're getting to the bottom of it. Uh, you know, obviously when you you know steal a sign on the field as a player, uh, that's kind of gamesmanship if they're not good enough to you know change signs. But when you're doing it electronically and at home, it gives you such an advantage. Uh, obviously disappointed uh, because, um, you know, from afar, kind of a big fan of the, of these teams and, and the talent on them. But uh, when you you hear stories like this, it uh, uh, to say that it, it really doesn't mean that much. Yeah, it does mean it's a huge advantage uh, knowing what pitch and location uh, as a hitter. Does it give you a hundred percent chance? No, but it does give you a much better chance at being able to put a good swing on a pitch when you know what's coming. Yeah, we, we've heard a bunch of pitchers say, I'd rather face a guy completely juiced up than a guy who knows what's coming. Major League Baseball did not choose to punish the players in this. Where are you as a player on that process? Well, again, uh, I think that the, the players are going to be punished by the, the media and by by the fans. Um, you know, you hate to see you know, some of the big-name players uh, – be taken out of the game, but in, you know, what has happened, I mean, AJ Hinch, probably one of the best young managers to come around in a long time, possibly a future hall of famer as a manager. He's out of the game right now. Will he come back? We'll see. But so there has been some, some fallout. There's no doubt. And I don't think it's over. I mean, the, the more you dig, if it becomes a bigger story, then uh, MLB is going to get to the bottom of it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.